Welcome back to Bayona's RC World and in today's video we have the Traxxas Slayer 3.3 the Slayer Pro alright so this vehicle basically is a nitro vehicle which will be utilizing 25% nitro fuel here by a Sidewinder we're gonna go ahead and go through the actual braking procedures based off of Traxxas's instruction manual and also the cheat card that is provided with every kit that they have alright so everybody most people have a, a kind of like questions in regards to the uh, procedure when they're reading through the actual manual or the actual uh, cheat card and don't really know how it actually goes in in real time so this is what this video is going to be about just kind of showing you step by step for all those newcomers to nitro or to the actual Traxxas vehicles alright so once you basically learn this procedure it's pretty much the same with all Traxxas nitro vehicles alright so if it's with the three the 2.5 engine which is basically you know back in the day or the new 3.3 uh, TRX engines same procedure every vehicle doesn't matter if you got the Slayer Pro the, um, the Rustler the Nitro the Revo the T-Max you know as long as Traxxas Nitro vehicles with the TRX 3.3 engine pretty much the same procedure all right so if you like this type of content go ahead and click that like and subscribe button and share the videos and if you are a subscriber to the channel I really appreciate you and if you're just strolling by watching the videos but you keep coming back hey do me a favor just click that subscribe button click 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 subscribe 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 I really appreciate you so you know let's get on with the actual video and have fun all right so this basically has the Traxxas uh, TRX 3.3 engine which has been you know proven on out there for your typical basher and backyard basher type deal. I mean, it's a awesome engine when done properly. When people tend to jump the gun and, and go straight put fuel in on a brand new vehicle and just go balls to the wall basically, uh, don't expect your engine to be reliable, all right? Because you didn't properly break it in with the, the, you know, the hot and cold cycle type deal to get all the parts meshed right in the inside the internals of the engine all right so uh follow the procedure it's reason why it's there we all don't want to be out there basically tuning the engine every single time we're out there trying to play with a vehicle because it's not running right or you're not getting the, the optimum performance that you are you know looking for and that all comes with proper braking and tuning so that's what we're gonna go ahead and do today. All right, so with that said, let's go get a close-up look at the actual engine in its unused state, brand spanking new. All right, let me go ahead and uh, kind of turn this around there. And as you can see, comes with a nice resonator pipe. Uh, also, at every nitro vehicle basically comes attached on the fuel tank with this braking procedure card all right as you can see it goes from tank one through five and the sixth tank is basically your actual tuning where you actually uh, tune the engine to its optimal uh, performance all right so every tank uh nitro vehicle comes with this cheat card so that you can carry it along when you're out there doing your actual braking all right with that said it also comes with uh, you got a plug already in your engine and then it comes with another Traxxas uh, plug for you know your after your braking and everything the actual braking procedure is all written out for you right in the manual all right it all goes all the way through the whole braking procedure from step one tank one all the way to tank six all right so it give you everything that you need to properly run in the engine the way Traxxas recommends and so far by doing this procedure in all my Traxxas vehicles my Traxxas engines always ran perfect every single time all right uh, I have tried it before where I actually tuned the engine my way back in the 80s way early 90s way follow the braking procedure by Traxxas and you will have a 
really happy engine and you also be happy because you've been playing more than you are tinkering of your engine all right so with that said let's get in, uh let's go continue on and let me go ahead and just show you some things here and there all right so first things first before we even start putting fuel in the vehicle get your little tools out and first thing I like, like to do is just go around the vehicle and uh, kind of, you know, tighten up the uh, the nuts for the wheels because then don't don't over torque them now. Don't don't crack the rim or anything. Just go in there and just kind of give it a few turns, maybe half a turn or so, because sometimes they're very loose. And if you just go run it like that, you trust me, you will lose this actual small wheel nut and your wheel will pop off and then. You're pretty much done for today all right so just go ahead and just doesn't hurt go through all your tire nuts and tighten them up simple as that we need to put batteries inside the transmitter and also the vehicle plug type deal all right this one in particular the slayer comes with a double a battery pack holder inside the uh, vehicle so basically you're going to flip the vehicle over all right, and right inside here, I don't know if you can see that, right inside here is where the battery holder is located. So you take out your tool, you know, Allen wrench, and you just basically unscrew this. All right. I am doing this video for, not for all those, you know, guys has been doing this hobby for 20 years you know 30 years this is for the new guys uh, you know and they don't really know much about it but they want to learn this is what this video is for so you know don't get your panties all twisted and all because this is so basic to you all right to some this is exciting this is brand new to them so give those people a chance and let them learn all right so here is the battery pack, the battery holder. It basically holds four AA batteries. And most Traxxas vehicles, uh, they, like I said, they, they do carry this. Now this is also upgradable. So you can also purchase the actual uh, nickel metal hydrate battery that goes right in here. You just basically unplug it from this, the end here and plug in the, um, the battery, all right? Uh, so that is upgradable if your your vehicle does not have a actual nickel metal hydrate battery right off the bat now these four double a battery thing uh, holder uh it, it it's pretty good i never really had no major issues with it i just like the comfort of you know uh charging the battery up and stuff like that and it lasting it just a little longer than these double a's all right and then from there after you put that in there just put it back on get your uh cover slide it back over this and then put the two screws right back in all right so put that one there and this one here like i said i know it for you guys out there who's been doing this for a while all right like i said give the newbies give the new guys you know a chance to learn and get to where you're at all right seen it too many times all right, uh, people been in the hobby for five, ten years already, and they want to criticize the new, the new guy that's coming in. Like, oh, really? You didn't know that? You, you should know that. No, they don't. All right, so give them a break. All right, so we got that in there. We got the battery in the actual controller, and so what we're gonna do from here is basically just turn it on and ensure that everything is running properly all right so we're going to turn on the switch on the back of the transmitter first and then we will turn on the vehicle which the switch is right here on the top just flip that on all right and then you can see let me go put this on the stand there all right so if i turn the steering wheel here the the, the wheel here left the wheel should the tire should go left tire should go right left right left right when you throttle you will see your actual throttle open and close and if you don't really know 
what it means by open and close, you just basically take off your filter here, pull this off, pop that out, and then let's go and give you a zoom in look here. Right there is your actual carburetor. All right. So when you pull the trigger, when you when you pull, let me see if you can get this. When you pull this trigger back, you're opening up the slide, the carb. All right. So when you pull it, you see it opening up. All right. So right now, let's say I'm going half throttle, and your carb is opening up halfway. All right. So your stick or your throttle correlates to the actual um, carburetor opening. All right. So that's what that does. All right. And then when you push forward, it's actually adding brake. So as you can see here, this servo right here is your throttle servo and also your brake servo. So this arm goes to your actual slider of your carburetor. All right. And this arm goes to your actual brake disc. So when you push forward on your actual brake, as you can see there, I'm pulling, right? It's pulling. So this arm, while simultaneously lowering the throttle, it's also pulling this, which clamps that disc and causes the vehicle to come to a stop, All right? So the more you tighten this right here, the more it puts pressure on this lever, which causes this to close even tighter. Now, you don't want your vehicle to be at a standstill and very hard to roll, all right? You want it to be able to roll freely until you actually give brake, all right? Because if, you, if it's dragging right off the bat before you even add brake, you're going to wear out your pads quick, all right? This is a little tip on that one. All right, let's go zoom back out here because everybody's probably getting dizzy. The camera's moving around too much. All righty. So with all that said... This is your easy start. This is what basically turns over your motor through the actual easy start wand here. All right, so this one will be placed directly into this square opening right there with those pins, all right? It will go directly in there. And when you pull the trigger, when you push this button right here, you're gonna see the two green LEDs, all right? One would basically say, Let's go see if you can zoom in. One will say motor and glow plug. So when they both illuminate green, that means both the motor and the glow plug are operating properly. Now, if you push on that red button and the glow plug does not light up, that means you're, you got a foul glow plug or a burnt glow plug. So the glow plug is no longer working. All right, so once you put this on there, and you're trying to start the vehicle and you got that glow plug light not illuminating then that means you have a glow plug issue so don't continue trying to pull you know push the button and try to start the vehicle your vehicle will not start all right so that's that this is a little little little, little tip on that part all right so from here we're going to go ahead and uh put the uh filter right back on there and the, the clip and then we will uh, start getting ready to um, do the first tank break in. All right, guys. So the fuel that we're going to be utilizing is the Sidewinder race blend. This is 25% uh, nitro fuel. All right. And uh, the glow plugs that we got currently in here are basically the Traxxas plugs that come with the actual vehicle. So we've got one currently in the uh, actual engine at the moment. And then we were provided a second one uh, within this same uh, within this uh, ready-to-run vehicle. All right. Now, if you you really want uh, you really need a, another uh, glow plug, then I would recommend the OS um, LC3 uh, glow plugs. They're uh, hot plugs. With that said, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up the tank and remove this cheat cord. All right. Now this card, like I said, is reason why it's there is so that before you put fuel, you can actually look at this, right? And I'll tell you basically right there, it'll tell you as well that uh, top fuel is the best performing, you know, fuel to utilize with all nitrous, uh, Traxxas nitro vehicles, which of course, if 
you're gonna promote your brand you're gonna promote all the way through but don't get that all twisted as well because you can utilize other brands of fuel and it will still do the same thing all right now a little note all right this little port right here all right in all the traxxas nitro vehicles transmission there's this plug thing right here and there's a reason why there's a sticker that says do not oil all right this inside if you can see i'm not too sure if you're going to be able to see it is where your gear the shift timer basically um it's not really a timer really but it's just like a setting uh the, there's a, a little set screw in there and the more you turn it in or you turn it out type deal it's going to adjust the timing of when the vehicle is going to shift so if you want it to shift earlier then you adjust it you can make the adjustment there if you want it to shift later then you can also make the adjustment there all right but we're not even going to touch that right now at this point all right, we gotta actually wait until the engine is properly broken in and properly tuned. If the engine is, if it's not shifting on time or if it's shifting way too late, you know, we will be adjusting the high end and to ensure the shifting is properly, you know, within the right range. And if that should all else fail, then we will go in and actually adjust that. But that is pretty much your last resort. All right, so don't be going directly into that and touching that because you will completely if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to ruin the whole timing uh, of your, your shifting. All right. All right. Let's go talk about the actual nitro fuel itself, first of all. All right. So the uh, actual vehicle here, all right, this is what Traxxas is basically going to say. All right. The use of Traxxas, right, top fuel for best performance and engine life. The TRX racing engine is optimized for 10 to 33% nitro fuel. If you break in your engine on 20% fuel, then use 20% fuel all of the time. So with that said, this does not mean technically that uh, you break it in with 20% that you cannot utilize 30%, right? Yes, it does, that's what it says. But the caveat to that is, if you're gonna change fuels, you have to retune the engine. So. Uh, go ahead and let's go in and put some fuel and let's go outside and get it all started up and we'll go through the actual break-in procedure all right guys so we're gonna basically like I said in the beginning that we are going off of the actual Traxxas manual for proper break-in procedures all right I'm going to basically show you the manual and then we're going to actually put it into action. All right, so we got fuel in the tank. So what we're going to do now is basically turn on your transmitter first, all right? And then turn on the vehicle. Double check and everything is connected. Everything is running right. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and actually start up the vehicle good rule of thumb what I normally do I know the instructions basically state that uh, everything is all uh, pre factory set all right so but I'm just gonna double check on the carburetor settings all right now for the high-end needle the, the factory settings for the high-end needle is four complete turns out so screw the uh, high speed needle which is the top screw here screw that all the way in being gent gentle now don't torque it all right screw that all the way till it stops so you're going to screw it in clockwise and then you're going to screw unscrew it counterclockwise four full turns out all right so we're going to turn it in right when it you feel that tension then stop don't keep turning or you'll damage your needle all right now four complete turns out full turns so we got one two three four 
right now this was also going to depend on what type of fuel you're using all right so if i'm using let's say 33 percent nitro or 30 percent nitro you might want to start off at five complete turns out all right so uh to just allow it to be a little bit more richer on the high end because you don't uh the more nitro uh you want to just be a little bit on the richer side all right now for the low end for the factory setting i will go ahead and show a picture here based on the manual so you can understand but that actual uh needle or that screw the top of the screw should be flush with the inner circle of the ring all right so that would be the uh, technically the um, the baseline or the actual uh, stock setting now if you want to know how many turns that is then you can actually go over there and turn it in and then turn it out completely to see exactly how many turns that is but the best way to do it is just make sure that top of that screw is flush with the inner um, ring all right and like I said uh, just look at that picture and you get an idea the yellow circle there that you see in the uh, photo that is the actual uh the carburetor ring area and then this the screw so you want that top of that screw to be flush with that yellow inner ring all right so most traxxas vehicles basically they don't really need to be primed but uh when you put the starter on and you pull the trigger just watch for the fuel uh to go from the tank into the carb and then you will hear the actual vehicle start now if you don't see any fuel going through then you can go ahead and plug your uh, resonator pipe with your finger and about two or three second burst until you see the actual fuel go through the fuel line all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and do that without doing the primer stuff yet we're just going to go ahead and uh, bump it and see if the fuel is going through as you can see the fuel is going through All the way. I'm gonna start here shortly. Right about now. All right. So the engine is currently on, and then from here we're gonna go. The, the idle is, sounds pretty good, so I don't think we need any adjustment. It's gonna eventually go up uh, because the engine is, you know, working and stuff. We're not really going to adjust that at this moment, all right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the trigger. Quarter throttle, counting two second bursts, all right? One, 1,000, two, 1,000. Then we go ahead and brake. Once again, quarter throttle, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, brake. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, brake. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. Break. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Break. Let's go turn around. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Break. Break. So we're going to be doing this process throughout the whole first tank of fuel. So this is the reason why you get your chair out because this one is the most boringest part. Boringest part. Boringest part of the break-in procedure. Well, this and and tank number two. At least tank number two, you get to put the body on, kind of see it. Uh, one, one thousand, two, one thousand at break. One, one thousand, two, one thousand at break. All right, so let me go continue this on right here on time lapse. Shut up valve, pinch it, and let it die. All right. So from here, we're just gonna go ahead and let the engine cool off for about 15 minutes, and then we're gonna go on to tank number two of the break-in process. And while we're waiting, make sure you don't forget to turn off your um, receiver or turn off the vehicle and your transmitter. All right. 
so for you know common practice with RC cars all right uh, we turn on the the radio first and then the vehicle and then when we're turning it off we're doing a shutdown we turn off the vehicle first and then the transmitter so basically it's just backwards all right all right guys so for uh, tank number two we're gonna be driving with the body on at this point all right and uh, from here we're gonna gently pull the trigger to half throttle tank one we did quarter tank two we're gonna go half throttle and we're still gonna go with a two second count and we're gonna repeat this throughout the whole tank of fuel just like how we did tank number one all right and, and from there before the the vehicle uh, fuel tank becomes empty we're gonna go ahead and pinch it off and we're gonna also have the engine cool down for 15 minutes before we go to tank number three all right so tank number two getting ready we're gonna turn on our transmitter and then we will turn on the vehicle all right just double check make sure everything is on and then we're gonna go ahead and start her up So just like tank number one, this time we are going to go half throttle. Alright, so we're going to go half throttle, two second count, then brake. One, one thousand, two, brake. One, one thousand, two, brake. One, one thousand, two, brake. Let's go turn around. We go half throttle again. One one thousand two brake. 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 All right. So we're gonna continue doing this until a whole tank of fuel is done. Tank number two, guys. Break in procedure. All right, so tank number two. Pretty much done. Let's go shut her off. All right, so once again, make sure you turn off your vehicle first and then the transmitter. That way, you save your battery for one. All right, so let's go wait 15 minutes, fuel her back up, and then we'll do tank number three all right all right guys so while we are waiting for the 15 minutes to go by uh between tank two and three uh the break-in procedure uh just go over the vehicle at this point all right uh just double check if you see anything loose anything coming off uh and 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 so forth all right just to just be a little bit proactive before you lose any screws or anything like that uh most of the time they this vehicle the vehicles from traxxas they're pretty well built um, right off the bat but in some cases like if you didn't double check like for example your tire nuts in the beginning those probably would have came loose by now or probably you would have lost a nut and your tire would have popped off also um, double check your your nut for the actual uh, your clutch all right this piece right in here to your nut there all right sometimes at the factory it, it, it comes just a little too loose all right so when you're throttling up sometimes you can hear the engine rev up but the vehicle doesn't look like it's gaining any um, more acceleration all right you can hear the engine whining but you don't see the acceleration that corresponds to that all right that means the um, the basically the clutch here is just way too too loose so it's spinning all right more than it is grabbing so what you do is you just basically grab your tool that comes with your uh, Traxxas kit which is a number eight all right and you just um, stick that on to that nut while holding the pinion or I mean the spur and go 
and tighten it up all right so clockwise to tighten and counterclockwise to loosen all right so you do that or instead of holding the spur there's a little hole right there i don't know if you can see it on the camera right there that little hole right there on that shaft you can put one of those allen wrenches in there to hold that while you go ahead and torque onto the um nut there and tighten it down just a tad bit don't over torque it because you'll end up bending um and breaking your shoes right in there all right so don't over torque it you don't want it um completely uh torqued down you still want a little bit of uh you want it to basically give when it you really needs to all right that's what those uh, shoes are for so that you don't over, uh, burn out your, your motor if there is a like if your vehicle gets stuck that should automatically slip to prevent you from either stripping your main spur gear or breaking your engine all righty all right all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and uh, fuel her up and do the third tank for break in All right, guys, so for the third tank of fuel, basically, as instructed, all right, we're gonna gently pull the throttle trigger, half throttle, over a three second count. So tank number one was basically a two second count. Tank number two, two second count. Now tank number three is one second longer. So a complete three seconds of actually holding at half throttle, all right? And then uh, break and then repeat. So one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, break. All right. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to continue this process once again until the uh, fuel basically gets very low, and then we're going to refuel and go right into break in tank number four. Also, on tank number three, as the engine kind of breaks in and loosens up, the idle speed may increase. All right. So the the idle might get a little bit higher and kind of stay there all right so uh, from there we're gonna basically reduce the idle screw all right um, we're gonna go counterclockwise to uh, lower down the actual idle speed so it is at a nice manageable idle and not too high and not too low all right because if your idle is too low eventually your engine is gonna die if it's too high yeah you don't want to overheat the engine type deal all right all right guys so just like I said before, turn on your radio first and then the vehicle and then double check you have control and let's go give it a start. All right, so we're gonna basically throttle up, holding for three second count. All right, so throttle. Hold. 1, 1,002, 1, 1,003, brake. 1, 1,002, 1, 1,003, brake. Let's go turn it around. Ready? 1, 1,002, 1, 1,003, brake. 1, 1,002, 1, 1,003, brake. Do it again. 1, 1,002, 1, 1,003, Break. One, one thousand two, one thousand three. Break. So that's what we're gonna be doing for the remainder of this tank three. One, one thousand two, one thousand three. Break. One, one thousand two, one thousand three. Break. So we are on the fourth tank of fuel. All right. So basically on the fourth tank of fuel, we will be gently pulling the trigger to full throttle for over a three second count. Then gently apply the brake to stop. All right, so we're gonna repeat this procedure basically until we run out of fuel. All right, so full throttle, three, three second stop. All right, guys. All right, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and do we're gonna throttle. So full throttle, three second count. One, one thousand two, one thousand three. Brake. Alright. 
then we're gonna do that again, all right? So three second count and then break. Full throttle. One, 1,002, 1,003, break. All right, turn around. Once again, ready? One, 1,002, 1,003, break. We're gonna go ahead and do that for the whole tank of fuel. All right. All right, guys, so also on tank number four, make sure that the vehicle, when you're doing full throttle, that it doesn't shift. If you're shifting uh, on tank number four, then you're holding the uh, the uh, trigger too long, all right? So three seconds, if it is basically shifting, then don't squeeze all the way, all right? Kind of be shy of full throttle, all right? And that's for tank number four. All right, let's get on with tank number five. All right, so for tank number five, we're gonna gently pull the trigger to full throttle over three second count, and then we're gonna hold for an additional two seconds, so a total of five seconds total. All right, we're gonna repeat this starting and stopping procedure until the fifth tank is nearly empty. All right, so the model about this time should be shifting into second gear. If it is not, then basically we're going to tune the high-speed needle clockwise 1-8 turn to lean the fuel mixture slightly and then test for shifting. All right, so we're going to start seeing some speed uh, within that five seconds. We're going to go ahead and hear the vehicle shift to second gear. And if not, then we're going to go ahead and tune it so that it can. All right, let's do this. All right, here we go. Speed needle in 18 turn clockwise. Well, we're running out of runway. Let's go. 1, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Nope. So we're going to turn it in one more. Turn 1 8 in. Try again. Alright. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. Down and come back. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four. There you go. You hear that shift? Exactly what we want. Here we go again. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. Break. All right, we're gonna do it again. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Shifting now. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. One thousand, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. One thousand, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. One thousand, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. One thousand, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four. All right, running out of 
and we need to go in a longer straightaway, but this will work. All right, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Oh. We're gonna continue on until we run out of the fuel. So we got the six tank. We're gonna do the break in. I mean, not break in, but the actual final tuning of the six tank here. All right. So the main thing we're gonna do basically is we're going to adjust the high end needle first. We're gonna ensure that we can squeeze all the power we can without sacrificing performance. All right. And then from there we will adjust the low end needle. Right. We'll do the pinch test, and we will pinch the fuel line. The, the engine should rev up two to three seconds or three to four seconds and then die if it dies out automatically That means the low end is too lean. So we'll have to open it up If it takes longer than three to four seconds, then it's too rich Then we'll have to close it and then finally we will adjust the idle the idle screw to ensure we got a nice subtle idle All right, so let's go do this before it gets too dark everything and before my phone starts falling off of the uh all right we're gonna go ahead and turn it in another 160. If it starts to uh, have poor performance, then we'll go back out. Now from here, you hear that idle. Well, let's do the pinch test first. All right, and we gotta do the pinch test and then the idle basically will be last. Now this is going based off of the actual manual. All right guys? Pinch the fuel line right at the car. Pinch, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four. You see here, it's rev up and then want to die on the fourth second so between three to four seconds the engine should uh, rev up and then want to die if it doesn't if you pinch it and it just dies then your low end needle is too lean if you pinch it and if you count maybe let's say six seconds it takes six seconds before it dies then you're too rich so between Two to four seconds, it should rise up and then want to die at the third or fourth second. Do a few passes first. 
So don't just automatically pinch it and or start it up and, and, and do an adjustment. Do a few passes first. Alright, let's go bring it in and we'll do a pinch test. Four seconds and should die out. I will take that. I would rather be just a little bit on the rich side than me. Alright? Now you hear the idle. Alright, the idle sounds really well. It has a good idle. Alright? So I don't think we're gonna really need to adjust the idle speed. Sounds really good. Alright, once again. On the pinch step, you go close to the part, hold and pinch and count two or three to four seconds and it's a raise up and then die. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, pinch for three to four seconds, we're good. Alright guys. Alright. So let's go do uh, a few more passes and we're going to call it good. Getting dark, guys. Doing, doing this all day. Got a good trellis nice smoke. Slayer, bro, four by four. Fully broken in and tuned. Ready for rock and roll. Alright. Let's go back home. Alright guys. So that concludes today's video on how to properly utilize the Traxxas manual on the braking procedure from tanks one through six, all right? And how to basically utilize this manual and actually do the proper break-in, all right? So I hope that uh, I help at least somebody out there. If this is your first time actually owning one of these Traxxas vehicles or it's your first time in the hobby, you're just getting into it, this is your first vehicle, then this video is for you. All right, tailored for you. So I hope that it answered some of your questions. If not, leave a comment below and let me know what you got, what questions do you have, and I will answer it to the best of my knowledge and hopefully uh, clarify things for you. All right, so um, I had fun. Unfortunately, the weather here on the island at the moment like the whole day today wasn't all that great fighting between sun and rain in between trying to do the video so uh, it took all day it took all day to do this video so uh, you know the last tank the sixth tank the final tuning of the, the engine was already at almost 7 in the evening it was getting dark so uh, you know show some love all right click that like and subscribe button please share the video and uh if you like this type of content you know just just send some love that's all i can say all right so uh i hope you enjoyed yourself regardless i enjoyed myself i enjoyed my time i enjoyed tuning the vehicle uh and trying to help somebody else out there uh get into the hobby and uh i hope 
you have years of enjoyment. And if you're here on the island of Guam and you have issues on your tuning, your engines, hey, give me a shout out. Send me a message on Messenger, WhatsApp, or just uh, comment on this video. And uh, I will respond and I will get back to you in regards to your issue. All right. So, yep. So I'll see you on the next video, whatever that is. I have no idea at the moment, but I'll see you then. Shishu!